On this video, we're gonna show you how to install one of these. It's a Vosterman V-Flow stratification fan. What this fan does and how it works is exceptional. I'm really not a big fan of wall mount fans, but if you're gonna run a wall mount or any air movement, this is very important for you. Because what air movement does in a room is it ensures the plant's health, it ensures the plant can uh, take up CO2 effectively, it strengthens the cells in the actual stock by uh, allowing movement, which actually increases the strength of the stock. Um, it helps avoid pests and disease. So choosing the right fan is super important. In this video, we're gonna show the installation of the Vosterman fan, but whenever choosing a fan, choose wisely because they can be the noisiest, uh, weakest link in a garden. In this space, we've actually decided to have the dehumidifiers go through the air conditioner. The air conditioner then shoots the air across the room, the cold air across the room. It then gets caught in this vortex that this Vosterman fan creates. And we're gonna have fresh air conditioned air being blown throughout the whole canopy of the plants. So this is gonna give us the most control. We've thought of a great plan on how to effectively create the perfect room. I'm really not a big fan of oscillating fans, wall mount fans. They're, they're kind of the Achilles heel of a garden. They tend to break, they're noisy, they rattle a lot, they can be fire hazards. I'm just not a big fan of them. So we've opted for the Vosterman Strat fan. It's a stratification fan which really creates massive airflow. It's quite quiet and very low vibration, but we're actually gonna go one step further and put isolation dampeners to actually make sure that if there's any movement coming from this fan, it's not being put into the building. So we're gonna be using some Unistrut and uh, some ready rod to actually hang this fan. Drill a pilot hole. Take your washer. Square. It's not going anywhere. That will hold up a truck. Once we find center, we also need to put in the Unistrut clips, which are these animals right here. They're gonna be simple to use. Just put them in, turn it clockwise, and you're off the races. That's centered in the room. And we're gonna mount the same thing exactly on the same other side. Let's make sure it's square. We're measuring the distances between each end. No, it's not already. Pretty close to square. Then, drill two more pilot holes. Self-explanatory, make sure you're going into studs. Make sure you're not going into any electrical underneath. That is not going anywhere. So, next we put the unit start clamps on. Super simple. Just basically turn a quarter Inch that way to the right. Locks in place inside the Unistrut. And now we're gonna mount the actual fan. But first we put the isolation dampeners down. We need to cut some ready rod. So I know we need approximately six inches of ready rod, six, seven inches. So we're gonna measure that, cut it to install the dampeners. Obviously of paramount importance when you're doing any grinding, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Now this exact same technique is used for mounting anything from the ceiling. In each one of these, there's threads that are gonna lock the Unistrut in. Now it's a bit of a process, obviously, putting this on, but once it's up there, this thing is going nowhere. The funny thing about gardens is everything takes 
twice as long and costs three times as much to set up a true garden. Everybody thinks that uh, cannabis cultivators have it easy. This is a lot of work and to do things right and spend the time and energy and do things properly is really, really super important. Snug that up. Make sure you're all the way in with all the threads and then lock it onto itself. That's on there, super strong. Same thing on this side. Now the nice thing about this is you also can raise and lower the fan if you wanted to by increasing the length of these. I'd like to have the fan as high as possible. Okay, now we put the isolation dampeners in place. Simply put, they're made by IR Systems and the serial number itself has SA25, which means this is rated for 25 pounds. We're doing 25 pounds per each side. It's always handy to have a couple extra hands handy. When it comes to doing these things, you always use a strap if you don't have some buddies to help you. So that's that. You can let go. So we'll do that to tighten up, but now that is completely free of vibration, which is really nice. So let's throw a level on that. That's well perfect. Let's plug it in. The little LCD thing should turn on. There we go. So that's enough airflow for the whole room. And it's quiet. During transpiration, plants are throwing off a lot of moisture. They're sucking up water and nutrients through the ground and they're transpiring it into the air. This is what creates humidity in a garden. If we don't have good air movement, that water ends up sitting between the leaves. Anytime there's water and moisture that's stagnant in any space, you end up with anaerobic bacteria. The best way to control pests and disease is having the correct environment to ensure that pests and disease don't have the right space to multiply. There's no such thing as too much air movement except for when you have oscillating fans blowing and you'll actually get wind burn and it'll get a lot of damage on the leaves. That's not acceptable. I don't like uh, environments where wind is fierce. This is not supposed to be a tornado. This is supposed to be nice, even flow. If this fan is not within your budget, it doesn't matter what type of air movement you have, just ensure that it's even, it's consistent, and it's not too direct. It takes a little time to get this right, but when every single leaf in the whole space is slightly dancing, that's a good indicator that you've got your airflow correct. What works best for your plants? That's the most important thing. 